Honor has just announced three new smartphones and I've partnered with them to get all three devices early. We've got the Honor 20 Lite, a pretty neat little budget phone, the Honor 20, a much more distinct flagship, and then the Honor 20 Pro, which in some ways breaks completely new ground. First up, the Lite, and at £249, it does a few things really well. It's one of the cheapest phones in the world with a triple camera setup. You get a 24 megapixel main camera, an ultra wide, and then a depth sensor. Oh yeah, and a 32 megapixel selfie camera, which is actually rather good. Anyways, onto the main event. First up, the standard Honor 20, and while the price does jump to 399, what you're actually getting here jumps a lot more. It starts to feel like a flagship phone. You've got a glass back with this holographic gradient finish. You get a punch hole in the display instead of a notch, and this side-mounted fingerprint scanner, which, like the Galaxy S10e, I could get used to. The phone is powered by the flagship Kirin 980 chip, 6 gigs of RAM and 128 gigs of storage. And, oh yeah, it has a quad camera setup. So, that's a 48 megapixel main camera, with the same sensor as the OnePlus 7 Pro. You get an ultra-wide lens, a depth sensor, and, bit of a twist, a dedicated camera for taking macro shots. So, there's a few cool things you can do here. You're probably quite familiar with how an ultra-wide shot looks, but the macro camera now lets you get closer to things than you're used to. One of the more curious features is, alongside a 48 megapixel mode, the camera has a 48 megapixel AI Ultra Clarity mode, which lets you hold the phone still for a few seconds, whilst it gets every detail it can. It seems to work really well, I wouldn't mind seeing this feature on other phones. You get a night mode too, although this really starts to come into its own when we get to the Honor 20 Pro. Speaking of which, this is the big one. It comes in £150 more than the standard Honor 20, and there's a few things here that I was just kind of itching to take a look at. Beneath the phone you get this insert, which has the SIM ejector tool on it, and just below that you get a USB Type-C to headphone jack adapter, and as well as of course the cable, you get a 225 watt Honor supercharger. Alright, so the first thing you're going to notice about this phone is that finish. So the model I have right here is called Phantom Black, I guess derived from how the sides are kind of dark, but then there's this mysterious purple that comes through in the middle. Make no mistake, this is their top tier flagship phone, but it actually sticks to the same slightly smaller form factor of the standard Honor 20. It works for me, I did find that one-handed usability actually isn't out of the question here, especially because your thumb kind of rests on that side-mounted fingerprint scanner so you don't have to do that kind of hand dancing act that you sometimes do within display scanners. You're looking at a 6.26 inch Full HD Plus LCD, which I wouldn't say is the highlight of the phone, but it's not bad. More important is this camera setup. So it's based on the Honor 20s, but they've added laser autofocus, swapped the depth assist to a three times telephoto camera, and bolstered the main camera quite significantly. It now has optical image stabilization, and to me the most curious part, a record-breaking f1.4 aperture. You can start with the ultra-wide, go into the main sensor, and then all the way into the 3x optical zoom and 5x hybrid zoom. And this is the kind of result you can expect if you're going to be switching between these options. The other thing is this f1.4 aperture. It means you can get pretty intense background blur without any need for portrait mode, and could mean game-changing night mode. It seems to really come into its own in super low light conditions, but I am planning a full camera comparison, so do subscribe if you want to see that. About that macro camera, you can access it by hitting more options and then the super macro camera mode. It's interesting, it's only got a 2 megapixel resolution, but it does let you get very close to subjects while keeping them in focus. The focus distance here is about 4 centimeters. Aside from that, the Honor 20 Pro has a big 4000 mAh battery, you get that fast Honor supercharging we talked about, and this phone jacks up the RAM and storage to 8 slash 256 gigs. There's no headphone jack, and the phone has a single speaker, but it can virtually recreate 9.1 surround sound if you're using earphones. It's running on Honor's Magic UI, which you might already be quite familiar with, and with that you get a lot of what Huawei's P30 Pro offers with its MUI skin. Features like wireless TV projection, GPU Turbo 3.0, which actually now supports more games and saves even more battery when playing them, and high vision, which can translate text in real time. Alright, so there we have it, three devices hitting three different price points with three different sets of features. If you want to find out more about them, I've dropped links in the description below. And if you enjoyed this video, a sub would be massively appreciated. My name is Aaron, this is Mr. Who's the Boss, and I'll catch you in the next one.